Have you recently heard of Eidolon? Maybe you've recently started playing Eidolon. Possibly news of the recent Queen Duke controversy has reached your ear holes, or maybe you stumbled across Eidolon randomly and thought it looked cute. Whatever the case may be, then you all must have one question floating in your mind. Why am I watching this video? I mean, what is Eidolon? Thankfully, I plan to answer that. Kind of. Explaining Eidolon to someone with no previous knowledge of the game can be a daunting task as it looks simple on the cover, but as soon as you start to unpack the contents of the game and progress further into it, it can get a little overwhelming at times. But that's why you have me to help confuse you even more as I try to explain the overall goal and premise of the game, the skills available in the game, and finally give you guys a brief overview of progression. So first things first, the goal or premise of Eidolon is to reach the end of each world, kill the boss which will unlock the portal back in town, unlocking the next world and also to increase your overall account level which allows you to create more characters. There are currently 5 worlds in the game with 8 planned in total. Each new world that you unlock will also unlock a new set of skills for you to begin working on. Worlds 1, 2 and 4 also have class trainers opening up well classes and later specializations. For example, World 1 gives us the three main damage archetypes found in RPGs. We get our melee focused warrior, our bow wielding archer and of course our spell slinging mage. Let's move on to skills. Skilling and crafting is where the RPG influence is really felt and is one of my favourite parts of the game. Each world generally gives two simpler skills based on resources and one more complex or involved skill. So let's take a look at them all now. World 1 skills include mining, woodcutting and crafting. Mining is pretty self-explanatory. If you've mined in any other game, then you get what this skill is. But for those of you who haven't, mining is the collection of raw ore, which is then used to smelt bars of varying quality, which is then used to craft gear and items and is the warrior's specialty. Woodcutting, again, is very simple. It's mining, but trees. It's another resource gathering skill and is the mage's specialty. Crafting or smithing is where you come to combine everything you've gathered from all of the other skills in the game and sometimes monster materials into armor, weapons, larger bags to increase your carry capacity, and so, so much more. The anvil is also used to create specific materials that are required for specific tasks throughout Eidolon, and you guessed it, this is the archer's specialty. Upon reaching World 2, you will unlock three new skills, these being fishing, bug catching, and alchemy. Fishing and bug catching are the same as mining and wood cutting from World 1. They are skills you use to gather raw resources and are the specialties of the warrior and the archer respectively, specifically the barbarian for fishing and the bowman for bug catching. Alchemy on the other hand is one of the more involved systems in the game and is huge for your overall account progression. There is a lot to alchemy, so much so it's worthy of its own video. But in short, you place characters into cauldrons to produce charges that you can then spend to unlock bubbles so that will give you account wide bonuses. This is the shaman specialty, again there's a lot to alchemy, the biggest thing I can say is don't ignore it. A more in depth alchemy explanation is something I have planned for the future so stay tuned for that. Once you've reached world 3, you gain access to to trapping, worship, and construction. Trapping is another resource collection skill, but is a little more complex. Trapping involves crafting crit traps that your characters can equip and then place down in certain areas of Eidolon to, well, trap critters. And this is the hunter's specialty. Worship is again a resource collection skill but with a tower defense minigame attached. There are totems placed around the world maps that give you two options, one to worship and one to summon. Summon will begin the tower defense minigame and your goal is to reach the highest wave you can, after which you will be able to worship at the totem to gain souls based on your highest wave completed and this is the wizard's specialty. Construction is another complex skill, but can be broken down into two separate sections, the building section and the cog section. Let's take a look at the cogs first. Welcome to the cog board, where our goal is to complete the world's lamest game of Minesweeper. But in short, you unlock slots on the cog board, which allows you to place cogs onto the board, which will give you varying bonuses that affect the building tab. So let's take a look at the building tab now. In the building tab, you have three rows of buildings. You can build by clicking on the sign initially to unlock the building, or the building itself once you have unlocked it, and assigning it to one of the build slots at the bottom of this interface. The top row unlocks new systems, the second row unlocks better towers for the worship skill, and the last row unlocks shrines, which are more account-wide bonuses. World 4 is where all skills become a little bit more involved, but reaching World 4 will allow you to unlock breeding, cooking, and laboratory. 
Breeding involves, well, breeding pets to battle in an arena, which again will unlock account-wide bonuses depending on the wave that you reach, and you can also send pets off on foraging expeditions to collect various spices used in the cooking skill. More on that in a second. Eventually, you'll be able to unlock shiny pets, which is another way to gain bonuses that affect your whole account in various ways, and this is the Beastmaster's specialty. Cooking is one of the simpler late game skills, but is huge for your overall account progression. You have 10 kitchens, which you will slowly be able to buy and set to cook meals for you. Once you have cooked enough of a certain meal, you can upgrade its bonus using the menu NPC. You use the spices gathered from the breeding skill to unlock new meals and also to upgrade your kitchens. Each meal will give a bonus. For example, the turkeys give total damage percent and salads will boost cash that you gain from monsters. And this is the Blood Berserker's specialty. Laboratory is a bit of a time sink, but unlike other skills in the game, it kinda has a finish point. So let's take a look at the lab interface. Upon uploading a character into a lab tube, you will see them become active in the lab mainframe. You can then click and drag this character around the board to connect them to the various bonuses. The higher your character's lab level, the further away from each bonus they can be and still be connected. Your goal is to be able to have all of the bonuses in the lab lit up with the fewest characters possible. There's also chips and jewels. Jewels, once bought, will appear in the mainframe as new bonuses that you can connect to. And chips are used in the console side system, which can be equipped to your characters and give various bonuses. Lab is the bubonic conjurer's specialty. And finally, for now, we have World 5, which gives us access to gaming, sailing, and divination. Gaming or the Gaming Garden is a virtual planner box you grow plants in to harvest for bits which are used to unlock or level up bonuses within gaming and other parts of Eidolon. It seems simple on the outset, but once you start, it slowly increases in complexity and eventually gives you access to a Pong minigame. What else could you ever really want? Divine Knight is the god gamer of Eidolon and specialises in this skill. Sailing involves buying ships, hiring captains, sending them off on epic voyages to faraway lands, all for the sole reason of pillaging artifacts to bring back for you to hoard. Oh, and of course these artifacts give you account-wide bonuses. Who'd thunk it? This is the Siege Breakers specialty. Divination is similar to laboratory as it's a fairly AFK skill, but instead of marinating in a lab tube all day, your characters can sit and meditate on an altar to gain both experience and divination points. Gaining experience and a higher divination level will unlock new styles of meditation which will affect your EXP and divination point gain. Speaking of points, divination points are used to make offerings to the gods of Eidolon. Once you have successfully made an offering to a god and unlocked them, you can then link your characters to that particular god to gain powerful buffs, but you can only be linked to a single god at any given time. This is the elemental sorcerer's specialty. One final thing about skills, just because a certain character specializes in a certain skill, it doesn't mean that only that character can do that skill. A general rule of thumb as you start out though, would be to stick to each class's specialty. I tried my best to summarize these skills as simply as I could. There's a lot more to many of them though. If you would like any more information about any of these skills, feel free to drop us a comment here on YouTube or even catch me live on Twitch. The link to my channel will be in the description. Progression in Eidolon is a complex web of weaving all of these skills together, pushing them to higher and higher levels to gather higher tiers of resources to craft better weapons, better armor, better carry capacity bags, and to continue to level up unlocked bonuses from all of the worlds. One of the best parts of this game is there's no straight up right or wrong way to go about it. There are more efficient and less efficient ways to get through the content, but you will often find you set yourself a goal and before long you've fallen down a rabbit hole of, oh, if I just do this and this and this first. This game has so much to do and so little time to do it, but Eidolon is a marathon and not a sprint. I'm currently at 3600 hours played on the game and I'm only just reaching endgame, which won't be endgame for too long once the new world is released, of course. It can be done a lot faster but I'm someone who enjoys the journey. So if anything that I've said today has piqued your interest in any way, then why not consider giving this awesome little game a go? And hey, why not? It's free. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Eidolon is just a game that I love and adore with an awesome community that is ready to welcome new players with open arms. And the best thing of all is it's still in development, so there's still so much more to come. In closing, what is Eidolon? Eidolon is a complex web of intricate systems with a large dollop of awesomeness and an amazing community. And I hope to see you in game soon. With that being said, I've been Titanic Llama, you've been watching a video, and I'm out. Peace.